Welcome to an hour of HealthMade Radio. HealthMade is a community for natural health seekers where we educate people about common health conditions and share extensive research on the most effective natural health treatments and promote legislation that protects our health freedoms. A core concept belief is in the innate intelligence and healing power of the body. And if properly supported spiritually, emotionally, and nutritionally, it can find its way back to health. HealthMade Radio will bring information from integrative health experts throughout the world. Health is what you make it. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld, and I will be your host. Today's guest is Eileen McCusick. Eileen McCusick has been researching the many facets of health and human potential for the past 35 years. In 1996, she picked up her first set of tuning forks and began, in, and began incorporating them in her massage therapy practice. After witnessing the positive effects on her clients, she began researching the effects of therapeutic sound on the human body and energy field, ultimately creating the sound therapy method of biofield tuning. In 2012, she received an MA in integrative education and completed her master's thesis exploring the effects of audible sound on the human body. Eileen is the author of two books on sound therapy and biofield science. Her first book, Tuning the Human Biofield, Healing with Vibrational Sound Therapy, won the 2015 Natalia Silver, Silver Award and 2017 Gold uh, COVR Award. Her second book, Electric Body, Electric Health, is a groundbreaking book or look at the electric nature of the human body, emotions, and life itself. Eileen is also the founder of Biofield Tuning Institute, which conducts grant-funded, peer-reviewed, and published research on the human biofield in partnership with other research organizations. Eileen, it's, it's uh, such an honor to have you on the show today, and then thank you so much for taking the time. You bet, Michael. Great to be here. I, I was really... Interest. It kind of struck me as I was reading your book, and I, I loved your book. I mean, it, it's so fascinating to me every time that somebody starts in one area of, of healing, and then all of a sudden, the it, it's kind of the the knowledge of the universe opens up as you start to kind of tinker with with a, the energy field or with the body in, in certain ways, and, and the body just kind of gives you all that information. And, and it was really fascinating to me. One of the things was that. In your journey, your own healing journey, you know, you, you're uh, dealing with you know, some, uh, yeah, dealing with some kind of health issues, and, and you were reading these self-help books, and you know, reaching out to you know people like Tony Robbins, and and then now when you're writing this book, I see that he is the first one that's kind of writing, you know, telling how awesome your book is. You know, so it was kind of funny to see see that that full circle taking place. Yeah, yeah, Tony, you know, I read his book back when I was 18, I think I Awaken the Giant Within <clears throat> and um also Unlimited Power, and it was his work was so influential on me. And I actually went when I was 20 and I did his one of his 9-day courses and walked across 65 feet of hot coals barefoot and uh you know, he he's a he is a a really he's a real deal. He's a genuinely good person and he uses his influence and power he's raised so much money for charity and uh, helped so many people yeah, yeah so it was an honor actually to have him be willing to give an endorsement for sure yeah but yeah that's that's really wonderful it just speaks highly of of your work and uh, because obviously i know that he uh, gets you know a lot of people would like to get a stamp of, of approval uh, on their work and and him doing that on yours just shows how groundbreaking and, and incredible the information that you're bringing forth in your book. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you started with tuning, you know, the, the, these tuning forks, and can you tell me a little bit about how they, how they work? I mean, how, how did that bring you to where you're at now you know, in your understanding? Well, <clears throat> you know, I think that we all know innately that music moves us. Uh, it can move us to cry, it can move us to dance, it can move us to sing, it can move us to make love. You know, music and sound is extremely moving. And most people are a sound therapist in some way. Most people have musical playlists and they choose certain musical selections in order <clears throat> to help them feel a certain way. 
so that's kind of what the tuning forks do. The tuning forks actually move us in the same way that music does, and they can evoke and reflect different emotions. Um, when I first started using them, I kind of came to them with the assumption and that my very first set was just the C major scale. And I thought that it, if you activated a tuning fork, um, it was just going to be kind of like a, a neutral tone. It was going to sound like a C. <laughs> and, and what I discovered in pretty short order was that that wasn't what was going on at all, that a tuning fork activated and held near the body actually <clears throat> sort of engages in a tonal conversation with the subtle acoustic and electromagnetic emissions of the body. And, you know, we also all know that we get vibes from people. Everybody has that experience. Everybody's had the experience of getting a bad vibe off somebody or getting a good vibe off of somebody or knowing within moments of meeting somebody whether you have a lot of resonance or attraction. And that's all happening on a subtle vibrational level because the body really does give off vibes. Everything in the body is in motion and and making waves and waves propagate. Like that's how they do an EEG of the brain. Brain waves have actually made it through the skull and are propagating off the head. You know, they don't just stop at the scalp. And so <clears throat> we're continually radiating uh, how we feel out into the world around us and people pick that up and respond to it. And so do tuning forks. And so what, if what, somebody what? has a lot of pain in a particular place. They are actually radiating the vibe of pain. And those very high frequency, very low amplitude emanations intersect with the very high frequency, low amplitude overtones and undertones in the tuning fork. <clears throat> and, the, and the tuning fork will actually, it's almost like an invisible ink decoder. You pass it around somebody, you can actually hear how they're feeling. It was was fascinating to me as as that uh, in your book you were talking about that uh, here, here you're talking about we're all vibration we all sound but you could actually they've done research listening to cells that cells are actually individual cells are giving off music they're giving off sound and so there's a a communication through music from each cell. And depending on the vitality or the health of that cell, that will then determine what kind of sound the cell is giving off. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and in that same research, they talk about how uh, cancer cells actually sound horribly out of tune, which I thought was really interesting because that's what we find in biofield tuning is that areas of the body that are not healthy, the, the vibrational waves that they're giving off, don't sound like music. They sound like noise. That's fast. And and also uh, we're we're talking about um, this emission and the communication then between these cells. You know, so we we have where um, you have the music they're sending, but also you have then biophotons that are being emitted. You know, where cells are then communicating. It's the same. You, you're then emitting this, this this frequency, whether it's based upon you know sound or light. I mean, all these things are, like you're mentioning, they're all just different forms of vibration, and that's how how we are communicating internally, and then that's also, it sounds like that's how we're connected to our environment. Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, we've all just been taught this sort of chemical, mechanical way of looking at it, that cellular processes are a consequence of chemistry bouncing around and going in and out of cells. And what that really leaves out is this whole electric, sonic, acoustic, um, sound and light show <laughs> that our body is actually communicating in. Chemistry is too slow. You know, if you look at an incredible high-level athlete spinning around, the way that all of those cells are communicating is instantaneously, light speed. Yeah, and, and and you, I mean, you can see that uh, looking at reality or universe, you know, how we're created. You can have one, you know, um, subatomic particle, you know, one end of the universe, another one in the other end of the universe, and they can communicate instantaneously. So it it shows that almost space and time is not um, not limiting us in that communication that's taking place. Right, I call that resonance in the ether. 
And if <clears throat> there's another piece that's sort of been obscured from our understanding is that we've been presented with a cosmological view of <clears throat> a life devoid of plasma, of the, the fourth state of matter, the electric nature of life. And, and then another state of matter beyond that, that uh, I use the term ether, but people call it quantum field, or there's a lot of different names for this, this sort of unified field, the luminiferous ocean of clear light that spins itself through torsion into plasma, and then that becomes gas, liquid, and solid. But fundamentally, it's all woven light of the same substance. And because it's all one, just like our body has instantaneous knowing of everything that's going on in it, the ether is the same way, self-aware. And it contains the information of everything that ever is, was, or will ever be. So it's, it's the same thing as what is referred to as the Akasha or the Akashic record. And the idea that, that this unified field uh, has, contains everything now, you know, beyond time and space. And, and with that, you, we're, we're talking, um, and I know I'm going to go back a little bit more to some of the fundamental pieces that, that you talked about, but uh, in regards to then this, this ether or, or, or Akashic record, you know, we, we're all dealing with events through our lives, you know, like you know, we have traumas, we have you know, things that happen, but it's also we are carrying then the traumas from past generations and all of that is stored somewhere, correct? And, and all of that we, we are connected to somehow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're woven from it. I mean, we are it. <laughs> so how, how does, um, I mean, because obviously a, a trauma is a trauma and it happened. And so uh, how does that impact us? And, and how, can we, uh, how, how, how can we clear that? I mean, how can we find out what it is? And how can we clear it? Well, you know, we tend to come from this, again, perspective of what we've been told, that our memories are stored in our brain, and we kind of take it at that. But if you think about it, every single experience that we have, whether it's what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we sense, is all translated by the body into an electromagnetic signal. And so it makes sense that all of these electromagnetic signals these impressions would be stored in our body's electromagnetic system. <clears throat> and we don't generally talk about the body's electrical system as a whole. I have come to see the human biofield or the body's electrical system as the, the electrical current that flows through us, that you know, the presence of which determines whether we're alive or dead. And in physics, anything that has an electric current running through it has a magnetic field around it. <clears throat> and the term biofield has been being used to describe the field. Uh, but what I've really come to see is you can't separate the magnetism of the field from the electricity in the body. It's all one electromagnetic system. I see it as shaped like a torus, which is a sphere with a spiral channel down the middle, and that it's bounded at the outer boundary in the same way that our atmosphere is. We have the ionosphere, magnetosphere that protect us from incoming solar radiation. The ionosphere also serves the purpose of creating a barrier of sorts, an electromagnetic barrier that traps frequencies in a certain wavelength. So most of us learn growing up in school that the ionosphere traps radio waves. And so they bounce around as standing waves within the atmosphere. So we see the human biofield also has a structure, this, what is called a double layer plasma membrane that defines the outer boundary of the field. And it extends about six feet uh, around us in, in every direction, a little shorter on the top and bottom. And what my research with the tuning forks revealed was that all of our memories appear to be stored in standing waves within the biofield. And my research specifically has been to actually map this field to through sonar, basically bouncing sound off the body, off the atmosphere around for many, many hours and observing a pa patterns that were present in each client and actually determining this whole anatomy 
and physiology of the biofield specific to uh, memories that were generated. And what I observed was that memories from conception through gestation were actually held in that double layer membrane. And then when you came inside that, there was the information of birth. And then dropping in a, it's like dropping a needle on an album and reading the record of a person's life. The tuning fork interacts with the information in these standing ways, and it will reveal specific traumas. So if you fell out of a tree and hit your head when you were five and, and you were 60, I'm going to find um, about maybe five inches from the edge of your field off the side of your head, I'm going to find an area of dissonance and resistance that speaks of your electromagnetic experience of that event. And if you've had cognitive, maybe some kind of cognitive issue since then, we actually might be able to clear it. Um, I'm going to find the divorce that you went through when you were 32 and all of the uncomfortable feelings that you felt that and maybe even the charge that you still have around that experience. And And it actually feels like electrical charge. When you come into a memory like that, where the the waves are all tangled and full of chaotic expression, they tend to trap light and, and electricity in the field. It tends to go into a freeze. So the more traumas that we've had that we haven't been able to deal with, the more places of noise and resistance we have in our electrical system. Now, what happens with the tuning forks is when they identify this kind of an area, they will initially resonate with the information that's present. And for me, having spent 25 years now listening to these sorts of things, I can get very precise insight into the nature. I can I'm be like, oh, this sounds like you moved when you were 13. You know, this sounds like you were in a car accident. This sounds like relationship stress. Now, all of these different experiences, we put words on them, but really they're, they're very feeling-oriented. And every feeling expresses a very specific tone. For example, if people have depression, if I hold a tuning fork off your left shoulder and I hear an undertone in it, I know that you are running that tone, that you have been feeling depressed because that is expressing itself totally in your system. If you have anxiety and I get near you with a fork and the fork is going to go brrrr, and I'm going to know that you're, that you're anxious. So every single emotion and really every single pathology expresses a particular noise. And when, and so the tuning fork will reflect that back to the body and the body is amazingly a self tuning instrument that can actually become more in tune from being exposed to a tuning fork, which is just an amazing thing. So for well, all we have to do is find the areas of noise, stick a fork in it, and then the, your body does the rest. It uses that input because it wants to sound harmonious. We are designed for ourselves to make music. And so the body given the opportunity of a tuning fork and be like, oh, the body's like, oh, wow, I'm so out of tune there. And it'll start to relax and open up and breathe and shift so that it hears itself in tune. I love it. I love We're going to take a, a – I, I, I love the term when you say stick a fork in it. You know, <laughs> I think that's <laughs> – we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. I'm here with Eileen McCusick. She is the author of the groundbreaking book that is coming out right now, actually. It's available right now, Electric Body, Electric Health. Uh, it's just a fascinating read. Uh, I'll be, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. I'm here with author Eileen McCusick and uh, uh, an amazing healer that's been in the uh, healing field for 35 years. She authored Electric Body, Electric Health, uh, showing the electric nature of the human body and motions and also life itself. Uh, 
Sarlene, I, I, I really thought it was, it was fascinating how you're able to have that communication, and obviously that communication can be done in, in many different ways in using tuning forks you know, with that, but it, it, it's a way then to pick up frequencies or vibrational communication from the body, uh, whether it's a trauma, whether it's an illness, or, and how they are then all located in different locations in the body. So have you noticed that there are certain patterns that, you know, certain traumas are stored in certain areas, uh, other traumas are stored in other areas? I mean, are, are, there, or are they kind of randomly distributed, uh, you know, in, in some fashion? What, what, what have you seen from, from what you've learned? So what I've noticed is that our whole biofield is really what we would call our mind, our, our conscious mind, our subconscious mind. Again, we tend to be pretty brain-centric in this, but what I found is that you really can't separate mind from body at all, and that <clears throat> particular imbalances, uh, mental imbalances. So, for example, if somebody tends to be a person who overthinks and overdoes, they tend to create an imbalance in the field off their right hip. So pretty much everybody I've ever treated who has come to me with right hip issues has a tendency to mentally perseverate and, or you know, to be on their, their task list, their to-do list. So they, they tend to be driving themselves too hard in some way or another. Now that might translate into physical activity, but it can also just be over an overactive mind that's especially future-oriented. Um, and, and that will create a, a structural weakness in the right hip due to the energetic imbalance in the field. Um, if people have left shoulder pain, very often, I mean pretty much always, um, they are carrying a burden of sadness or grief that they have not expressed sufficiently. And that energy tends to accumulate off of the left shoulder. Um, and we could go through the entire anatomy. Basically, what I found with the biofield anatomy is that the field is sort of compartmentalized and stratified and timelined. And that, you know, if you told me of a particular trauma at a particular age, I would be able to go exactly to that point in your field and find it. Yeah, I'd be able to pinpoint it exactly. And, and that's what's so fascinating reading through your book where you're going through all the different areas of the body and then being able to localizing that these these are the different traumas or events or energies that's associated with that area. So if you're having like like you're saying the the right hip, you know, then you you tend to always be running and driven and you know whether it's you know mentally, emotionally, or, or physically, but you're always on that go. So it's, it's it's really interesting then that you can then learn more about yourself as you're then understanding what, what ailments that, that you're having just through reading your book and, and seeing that these are the, the energies that um, where, where I'm stuck, you know, pretty much. Mm -hmm. and, right, and, it does. It can give you a lot of insight, you know, and, and that's always what people say to me, you know, when they, you know, people I've sat next to on planes <laughs> and they tell me where they ache and I tell them exactly what their imbalance and issue is and they're just like, you just nailed me. <laughs> so. <laughs> But but that's after how many how many thousands of, of tuning fork sessions? <laughs> yeah, many many thousands of of really deep listening, and it's been it's been such an interesting pursuit because you know this is a territory that's been hidden in plain view, and so to actually because I love exploring and I love adventures, and so to actually be able to map something that was previously un, uncharted uh, in this way. Um, has been an incredibly gratifying practice and, and to observe these patterns, <clears throat> but then to also see how when you shine light on these patterns for people, um, it, it's, it takes them to a whole other level in their healing. It's not like just going to physical therapy and getting exercises for that hip. It's suddenly becoming self-aware when your hip starts to hurt and, and checking yourself and being like, what am I thinking about? What am I doing? Am I trying, you know, am I pushing myself too hard to, to just check it and then even beyond that 
to recognize that you can actually move your biofield around yourself consciously from the inside. You can rein your energy in and bring yourself to the midline and bring yourself to the present moment and get yourself out of pain. You know, now it takes some practice, but it's absolutely doable. I'd like to. I would love to chat a little bit more about that um, after the break. I mean, one of the things that, um, yeah, let's let's take a quick break because I I I I don't want to chop that up in the middle. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to Health Made Radio. I'm here with Eileen McCusick. Welcome back to Health Made Radio. I'm here with Eileen McCusick. She is the author of Electric Body, Electric Health. Uh, an amazing, fascinating book where you get to actually learn uh, more about yourself, how you're functioning, and you can then uh, look at the different areas of your body if you're dealing with disease or, or health ailment or pain, and then you can then associate that with uh, things that may be stuck in your life that uh, you can then uh, have different techniques to be able to move that energy. So. What are some of the things that obviously you're using tuning forks? You're, you're sticking a fork in that energy that is, uh, and you talk about it's kind of like frozen energy. And then once you stick a fork in it or open that up, you release that energy. And obviously that becomes then available to the individual, which will increase their vitality and health and uh, making them just feel better about themselves. So what, what are some of the things that they can do uh, that an individual can do that does not do tuna fork, but uh, to, to kind of move these, this energy around. Well, when you read in the book about the different zones and maybe see yourself in a particular thing, like I have uh, right knee issues, for example. So the, the right knee relates to being blocked moving forward and encountering resistance. And that could be from the outside, it could be circumstances, it could be characters, it could be our own habit of self-sabotage. And so if you're in an experience where your right knee is, is inflamed or you're having right knee pain, you, you just sit back and go, okay, what, what am I chafing up against? Where is my struggle here? And, and is there a way that I can step back and reframe it? Can I widen the lens? Can I recognize that I'm engaged in this habitual struggle? Because maybe, maybe you grew up in a home where parents were always thwarting your desires or invalidating your wishes. You know, many people, I've heard so many stories, of people with right knee things saying, you know, I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be an actor. And instead I went into, I went to business school because <laughs> they had parents who were diverting them away from their own natural <clears throat> inclinations. And then that just kind of becomes a habit or an expectation that somebody is going to thwart you or something is going to thwart you. So just recognizing what is happening and, and the connection between outside circumstances, mental beliefs and stories and habits and patterns, and recognizing that we actually have the ability to shift it up. You know, there's infinite possibilities open to us in any given moment. But we, unfortunately, the tracks that get laid down early, you know, our early circuitry and wiring and beliefs that they that get formed kind of go on to inform our lives and become the tracks of our lives. And if you are frustrated over unmet needs habitually as a child, there's a good chance you're going to end up with left hip issues and a kind of perennial feeling that your needs aren't met because it's a habit, it's a pattern, it's familiar. And so your biofield has just organized itself in that way. But fundamentally, this is just wiring that can change very quickly and, and waves in space that can change in an instant, that can change in an instant. So we're not as bound as we think we are. We actually have much more degrees of freedom available to us in any given moment than we realize. And so this ability to step back and to widen the lens, to take in more information, allows you to see other solutions, right? Same action, same results. That's stuckness. That's what, why people would come to me, you know? <laughs> because they would be stuck. 
in some way, in some kind of pattern that no matter how hard they tried from the inside out, they weren't being able to shift it. And then I would come in with my tinny fork, find exactly where the pattern is and how it's flowing through their electrical system and essentially redirect the current into the place where it belongs, where it's supposed to flow, where it's healthy, where it's anatomically correct. But that's a process of magnetization. A tuning fork acts like, like a magnet. A vibrating tuning fork produces electromagnetic energy. And so it becomes like a magnet, and I'm able to adjust the magnetic field, not just the rhythms, but also the way that things are flowing, because I can actually grab <laughs> concentrations of energy and, and move them like a magnet moving iron filings. So... If I can come in and find where your mental imbalance is, your emotional imbalance, uh, let's say you have a vicious inner critic that's always giving you a hard time, that's going to sit kind of off the, the sacral center on, on the right, and that can also lead to right hip pain. And, um, and so all of a sudden your hip flares up and you realize that you are criticizing yourself and that you're energizing that area off your right hip. And you can make a conscious choice to, to pull that energy into the center, to the midline of your body with your own mind, to just connect to that discomfort and actually use your own mind to pull it to center and to make a conscious choice to be kind to yourself instead of critical to yourself. Yeah, because we have the tendency that obviously if there's anything unpleasant, uh, we want to distance ourselves from it. We want to disconnect from it. But what, what happens then is that the that imbalance or that frozen energy uh, or that discord is still there. Yeah, we, we're exactly. just ignoring it or we're medicating ourselves so that we won't, uh, we're not present enough to be able to listen to it. So what, what you're saying is, is to connect with that, I mean, to, to listen to the signals that are sent to you and then using that information and, and pull and, and really kind of focus on that, that energy and then pull that into the middle, just kind of using your, 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 your mental space, your, I mean, how, how, how do you Your imagination, your intention, imagination, intention, awareness, <clears throat> desire, conviction, command. Yeah, all that. All that, yeah. And, and like you were saying, that we're much more powerful than we give ourselves credit. I mean, so much more powerful. If I've learned anything from this work and this ability to really listen to the human body and human soul, because I would also call our electrical body our soul, and, uh, and, and to really see that we are amazing, powerful, radiant, harmonious, beautiful, noble beings at our core that our essential harmony, our signal without noise, is jaw-droppingly, astonishingly beautiful and in tune with the universe. And we've been sold this lie that we're guilty sinners who've fallen from grace, who've been cast out of the garden, who are not worthy of the experience of grace, and we all believe it. And because we don't see, hear, understand, or recognize our own magnificence, uh, we can't embrace it. And so people get stuck in their noise and self-identify to their noise and to their pain body and, and get stuck in that. And what's amazing to me is that with every single person that I've worked on, you know, once we clear the noise and the static and what is underneath, what is at the core becomes strengthened and gets revealed and I see it and I hear it, I'll say to them, oh my God, look at you, look at how beautiful you are in this way and look at these gifts that you have. And, I was, and I'm like, you're so amazing. I'm not making this up. It's really what I see and hear. And I share it with people and they always look at me shyly and say, I knew that. Yeah. Because deep down, we all do know this and we do know our gifts and our beauty and, and our greatness. It's just that it doesn't, life doesn't reflect that back to us. Life doesn't encourage that in us. 
you know, so we don't we don't get the opportunity to express it. And very often it feels too grand anyway. Like, who am I to be all that? It, it's not easy to actually embrace our greatness. You know, I had the experience of seeing for, for over a decade it, it, this amazing, the amazingness of the human body and, and soul. It took a decade for it to dawn on me. I'll never forget the day. I <laughs> think so. Somebody had just left, and I was sitting there after, you know, kind of bathed in the glow of how beautiful they were. And, and I was like, oh, my God, if everybody is amazing and beautiful and incredible, that must mean I am, too. <laughs> like, it, it, was, it took that long for it to sink in because we've been so hardwired to believe otherwise that even though I was seeing it in person after person, it didn't occur to me that I had the same thing. Uh, exactly. I mean, it, if, if we look at the the amazing orchestra, I mean that that's given to us by our birthright. I mean, we're born and we were we have this this beautiful orchestra of communication and interaction and and uh, connection with with uh, within ourselves, with within yeah, you know, with with all the people around us, with the creation around us, and uh, I mean, you you can't. You can't but marvel uh, the intelligence behind all of that, and then to think that you have to always uh, kind of that you are letting go of your own power and looking for solutions elsewhere than within uh, is, is you know that that's it's sad that we are that disconnected, not understanding that the power that truly exists that that can create that tremendous healing within us. I mean so. Yeah, that that's why I've so loved about your book is is that uh, bringing back that connection to the beauty that that exists within us. Um, uh, that's, that's really wonderful. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. I'm here with Eileen McCusick. She is the author of Electric Book, Electric Health. Oh, I'm sorry. It is an electric book. Yeah, when you're holding it, it's very electric. Electric Body, Electric Health. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. I'm here with Eileen McCusick. Uh, she is the author of, a, of an amazing, groundbreaking book, Electric Body, Electric Health. Uh, it's a look at the electric nature of the human body, emotions, and life itself. Uh, Eileen, I'm, I'm curious. We're, we're talking about traumas and events and, and health issues that are stored you know, that, that's happened within our lifespan and how that is stored in the field. But uh, a lot of times, I mean, we're, we're talking about in, inherited, you know, genetic uh, and diseases, but also then traumas that may have happened in, in prior generations. I mean, it's, is that something that can be passed forward within our biofield and, and we still have to kind of deal and try to resolve that? Well, we definitely can can resolve it, and you know I've really learned to um, to think about this differently too. So, I think that for many of us in um, you know certainly American culture, um, we we have this kind of forward now and forward kind of way of looking at things, and we've kind of left the old country behind. And so we don't necessarily recognize how strongly we've been influenced by the experiences of our ancestors. But they absolutely inform us. And there's a, a word that I use that is energetics, which I say is the tone of the song of our DNA. We don't just inherit eye color and hair color <clears throat> build and things like that. We also inherit tonal disposition. So if your mother was depressed and her mother was depressed, it's very likely that you are going to inherit that tonal disposition. And if you go and try to solve that problem at the level of me and mine without recognizing and, and addressing the fact that that tonal quality may have been in the makeup of your ancestors for generations, that you're not just dealing with your own experiences, but the cumulative part of that song in the DNA that created you. 
and, so, and you have and the this has really been proven um, through you know lots of different research has really shown uh, there was some really neat research done with mice and the smell of cherries being accompanied with an electrical shock that they would they would make these mice smell cherries and then they would zap them and even generations later the mice still experience an aversion to the smell of cherries. So we're much more informed by our ancestors than we realize. The neat thing is, is that with this work with sound and the biofield, because all of that tonal information is present in the biofield, in fact, there's a very specific part of the anatomy of the biofield that I call the ancestral rivers. Um, that run about 10 inches on either side of the shoulders, the information I find in the right side is feels like the genetic song stream of the father's lineage and the left is of the mother's. And so when we stick a fork in this particular zone, you can hear the noise, you can hear the chaos, you can hear all the heavy vibes. But as you leave a fork in it, the body will use that input to actually retune the DNA, to get the no to shake the noise out of the signal and really amplify uh, the more pure tone underneath, so that you get kind of like all the good stuff from your ancestors, but you get to, you get help in shaking out the the heavy, you know, that maybe was never expressed or never resolved. So we can we can absolutely and so many people, you know, this is funny because for years. I had an office in the middle of nowhere in the mountains of Vermont, no sign on the wall, nothing. And people would find me. They'd come to my office and they would say to me, I'm here to clean up my genetic lineage. And I'd be like, I don't know how you found me, <laughs> but you came to the right place because this work does that. And, and it's incredibly powerful. Now it's layers and it takes time. It, it isn't an instant fix. You know, this work can go as deep and as far as you want it to go. You know, I've worked with people who come in, they're like, my knee hurts. I'm like, great. I fix them in a couple of sessions and then I don't see them again. But, but for people who are really committed to accessing their full potential, this process of, of liberating energy from traumas is really a process of accessing our potential. And actually people who have had a lot of trauma, actually are kind of at an advantage when it comes to this work because you've had to learn to live your life with so little of your potential really online. And that has made you stronger. So when you start to access this potential, and it's a much nicer thought than thinking of, oh, healing this trauma. You know, <laughs> It's much nicer to think of it as, yeah, I might feel uncomfortable for a minute, the fact of the matter is, is that I already went through that once. And if, and if I'm going to experience some discomfort reliving it, it's worth it because I'm going to get that bit of my soul back. I'm going to get that bit of electric potential that's been frozen, and I'm going to get that back into circulation. And so the more of these bits of frozen potential that you access and liberate, the more your voltage goes up, the more you start to become who you were designed to be. And, and that is what you're, you're talking about in your book. I mean, the, the importance of raising, or, or I wouldn't say, it, to, to increase your inner voltage. I mean, because you're talking about our, our body is electric and, and we need to have that strong voltage within us. And doing these type of things then will then release this, this frozen or this discord, which will then increase that inner voltage within us. Exactly. So, uh, how? So you're, you're talking. I mean, I was fascinated in your book about the DNA um, in regards to how that was a almost like a light storage unit. I and mean, if you look upon the DNA as a um, as a coil, and and scientists are are looking upon it as almost like a a perfect light storage unit, so you can then store different vibrations. So if you're then uh, having, you know, if your mother was depressed and prior, you know, her mother was depressed, you're then s storing that kind of light within the DNA as, as a coil. Um, but then, uh, and then you have the, you're talking about the micro tubulins, which are like little antennas outside the cell, which were like, you know, receiving light 
receiving frequency. So it was, it was fascinating to see how this cell was an actually a um, almost a kind of a, a yeah, capacitor holding on to you know these these light frequencies and then communicating to the rest of the world you know through these antennas on the cells. Uh, that was just fascinating to me. Yeah, it's a completely different way of looking at it from what most of us have been taught. It's the updated version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But it, but it, it, like you're saying, we we are so much more than these chemical factories, and and we are we are light beings, and and as light beings to then work with frequencies, you know, like sound, like light, you know, and to then increase this inner voltage uh, that. Uh, that that becomes so important that you know, such a crucial work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as our voltage goes up, our all of our body's functioning goes up. Our immunity, our resiliency. Uh, you know, I, one of the fun things that I do with people is I say, you know, if your if your body is a battery, on a scale of one to one hundred of a battery meter, where is your meter at right now? And if you're saying something like 70, you know, imagine you have a manufacturing business and you have 100 employees that are supposed to be on the floor every day and only 70 are showing up every day. You know, is everything getting taken care of properly? Or is the business thriving? Absolutely not. So we really want to, you know, start when you start thinking in terms of your electric health and how strong your voltage is and where your battery meter is at. It's, it's actually a much easier approach to health than like, did I eat enough vegetables today? Because, or did I, am I taking the right supplements? <laughs> because it's really the amount of energy you have is absolutely related to the strength of the electric current, the electric juice. How much juice have you got running in your system? And, and no amount of supplements is going to take care of the fact if you're not breathing deeply enough or you know if you if you're very frozen and locked in many places the supplements aren't going to do you any good because what you need is to boost your juice yeah i, I agree well eileen it's, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show today and and uh, uh, your book is so important for people to understand uh, what they need to do in order to be able to to obtain health and kind of free themselves up, you know, to get get rid of all this this stagnated you know, energy that's blocking them for, you know, to experience their their ultimate potential, which is their you know their you know the, the intelligence and and the true power that exists within them. So, Eileen, thank you so much for for taking the time today. Yeah, you bet. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. That is it for today. You're listening to Health Made Radio. Uh, remember, check us out at healthmade.co. Health is what you make it. 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 Make it.